uh, in this short video i'm going to present you what is hypothesis testing is all about so over here uh, we need to understand what is hypothesis first to understand the hypothesis testing so for that uh, you can see that so hypothesis is basically a status quo or which is traditionally true and uh, then if i go to the alternative hypothesis that means uh, something is new is going to happen or something new has been introduced so which is a which uh, change the status quo so if i give the example of that uh, suppose a, a company which is producing some furniture and everything so for a particular chair their average uh, uh, for particular chair or anything you can say or, or any uh, any small product which is uh, for uh, like weight of that is usually 100 gram okay so they are pre producing it for a one year or two years and they have seen that their weight is almost 100 gram okay so and uh, so they have done some research and analytics and they are they're facing some customer issues and customers are requesting that uh, their weight should be little lower or little higher you can say over here you can see that so uh, they have introduced some more layers do some customizations do some fancy stuff on, on that particular product and now they have taken a small portion of that population or of, of sample they have taken the sample of those product and seen that uh, their average weight of that particular population is about more than 100 grams so they are they know that uh, it is good that what the customers is wanting so for that they want to uh, statistically find out if that is true for the whole population so that is what uh, the hypothesis testing is, go is going to come over here so we can do the hypothesis testing uh, to understand if that is applicable for the whole uh, population or not on that is only for this particular uh, sample so for that uh, just to show you uh, about uh, why it is what is, why it is important uh, then uh, we can show you what is uh, how we can do the hypothesis testing is all about so in this particular graph you can see that like it's a uh, like normal distribution graph and over here you can see it's a probability distribution so uh, like um, say so most of the population or most of the weights in that case is going to be in that particular region like for fail to reject region so th in this region you can see that so most of the ages of uh, most of the like weights of that particular product is going to be in that region so it's a highly probable region so it's a null uh, so it's a basically status quo so uh, you can see that like because uh, average average of uh, weight is about 100 100 gram or 100 kg you can say and uh, if some new product is going to introduce and that is very likely to be in that range, range basically uh, or near it to the 100 uh, kg or 100 gram so that is basically the status quo and we are introducing some new um, concepts or new materials so that could be little higher in that case it could be uh, like a null hypothesis which can be represented in this area okay so first you understand that this is the like uh, probability distribution and most of the probability is going to be happen in this area and something is new is going to come and that is going to be in this area so <clears throat> so whenever uh, we are like testing the hypothesis we need to understand where that particular products uh, average weight or something which it could be anything that is belongs to in that area or in that area if that belongs to in this area that means that uh, <clears throat> we are failed to reject the null hypothesis basically something is new is going to come and that is not happening basically so it's a status quo is going forward and if that is uh, in that particular region for the reject region so in that case we can say that uh, the new product is something different and that is not following the status quo so that is that case we can reject the null hypothesis and we can accept the alternative hypothesis so for that you can see for that we can what you can do is that we can uh, use the particular uh, terminology that is the significance level that is alpha so alpha is uh, 0 0.05 or 95 percent confidence level so in this particular uh, chart particular graph you can see that so, so 95% means this area. So 
for the whole this particular fail to reject area that is a 95 percent and 0 0.05 or 5 percent is a alpha significance level over here over that so so over here uh, what you can do is that we can calculate p value so p value is nothing uh, but the area under the curve so we can represent p value as the area so value of alpha 5% means value of this particular region area is 5% uh, is, is 5% sorry it's 0.25% uh, this is 0.25% and if you sum up these two then it will become uh, 5% and this whole area like fail to reject area it is 95% so any value any p value for that particular sample is if that is in this region or in this region then we can say that we can accept the um, alternative hypothesis and uh, and uh, we are rejecting the null, hypo null hypothesis and if it and if it is in this area then we can accept the uh, null hypothesis that is what we are going to do so p value this area and we have told you so if p value so basically uh, over here what you are trying to do is that we trying to find out the area of this region so if the area uh, of the area of the sample is in this region then we are rejecting the null hypothesis and and if it is in this region we are trying to reject the null hypothesis so that is what i have told over here so p is greater than alpha then fail to reject the null hypothesis and p less than alpha then reject the null hypothesis and that is what uh, we are going to do over here with a practical example so you can see that like uh, for the practical example what you are going to introduce over here is the weekly sales numbers so in the weekly sales number you can see that there are two different samples so uh, there are two represent uh, re uh, like a representative one is the rep uh, representative one another one is the representative two so representative one uh, sales number is this so this nine numbers and representative two uh, this sales number is this these nine numbers so we are trying to find out if there is a relationship between these two uh, representatives uh, sales number basically so they are belongs to two different regions and there should not be any kind of uh, relationship so that is a status quo so hypothesis is a, a no relationship and null hypothesis uh, sorry so ordinary hypothesis is a, it's a uh, alternative hypothesis there is a relationship and uh, null hypothesis is there is uh, no real relationship and that can be represented as uh, like p value if p value is greater than 0 0.05 that means we are failed to reject the null hypothesis so that means there is a null hypothesis so there is no real any relationship and if p less than 0 0.05 and then we are rejecting the null hypothesis for that we should go for the like python environment so over here you can see i have already opened it up so so this is the hypothesis testing a uh, google collaboratory uh, notebook over here so for for the calculation i'm going to like import a uh, scipy package in scipy we are uh, like introducing the stats model from there we are taking the t test uh, like individual basically is test independent so we are just uh, like going to like import that and after that i have already pop up the representative sales numbers as you can see so rp1 is a representative one and rp2 is a representative two and that is their sales numbers so we are just uh, we're just taking it and after that how to do the p value it's very simple over here using python so we are just taking p test independent representative one and representative two and then dot p value p value is the attribute over here so if we just run this you can see that the, that is a p value that is 0 0.09 so 0 0.09 means uh, that is more than 0 0.05 so that means null hypothesis is correct so there is no any relationship we are failed to reject the null hypothesis but if that become uh, less than 0 0.05 in that case we can say there is a relationship between these two representatives so that is the thing and 
the most important question is that why it can be helpful for you for machine learning so in the machine learning you can see there are a lot of independent variables you are considering in the data sets or features you might say so there are two maybe suppose there are two features you need to understand if there is some relationship between these two features or not so suppose the feature uh, one is a representative one and feature two is a representative two and you just do the like uh, this particular test and find the p-value and find out if there is a statistical significance between these two or not and that would help you out for your uh, machine learning algorithm so so let's come back to <coughs> our uh, like presentation so you can see that uh, so this is the like uh, our weekly sales example is all about and the hypothesis test can be two types there could be one tail test and there could be two tail test so what that it mean is that so one tail means uh, this particular test only this region we are not considering this portion in the uh, like this portion and we are on, only considering the right hand side of the portion and two tail test means we are considering both options so as it is showing over there so in the most of the cases it is based to do the two tail test because it will only tell you if there is a significance or not but one tail, one tail test would help you out to understand the direction of that suppose in this particular example suppose uh, in this particular example so we are considering the average weight is uh, less than or equal to 100 gram and our average coordinative hypothesis was that is greater than 100 gram okay in that case what we will do we will do the one tail test to identify if that is greater than 100 uh, gram or not that's it Hi. so that is that means uh, if that is less than or equal to 100 gram so that is a basically status quo and alternative hypothesis greater than 100 gram so that is what we are trying to find out over here so uh, so that is the one tail test and two tail test so uh, if i go to the presentation uh, over here uh, they, you can also see uh, you can do z score or t score for the same like we have considered p value over here because it is very popular but you can also do the z score or t, t score we are not going more deep into the mathematics but what, what you can say is that like uh, there is a particular formula from where we can find out the z score and t score and from the z table and t table uh, you need to uh, find out that particular small z score and then compare these two values to identify if it is statistically significant or not for an example if uh, like small z critical uh, like z score that is capital z that is less than the critical value in that case we are fail to reject we are uh, sorry we are rejecting the null hypothesis and if it is greater than that if it is in that particular region uh, in that particular region so that means it's a uh, fail to reject null hypothesis so that is another approach we can consider i'm not going more deep into that usually we should do the p value calculations for this and uh, and that's it that's it. it's all about the hypothesis testing uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. So, I know it's a very uh, small interaction, but it is uh, more than sufficient to just to add, just to use the hypothesis in your daily life, in your machine learning algorithms and everything. Uh, I hope you like the video. Thank you.